Good morning. Here's our morning roundup of all the media news you need to know. Want to get this briefing in your inbox every morning? Subscribe here. Victory for the University of North Carolina. Hardly the irony is pretty rich, a top NCAA official said Friday during a conference call with the media about an outrageous college sports scandal that the organization should hire Dan Kane, a reporter for the Raleigh News and Observer, as an investigator. Kane is among a cadre at The Daily that for years has covered, and in many instances revealed, outright academic fraud by the University of North Carolina. There were other media who did good work, including The New York Times, but nobody liked The Raleigh Daily, and nobody quite liked Kane. Now comes the resolution of the case, as Kane himself wrote while on vacation in California, UNC Chapel Hill escaped NCAA sanctions in what was one of the longest-running academic scandals in college sports history, in large part by refusing to identify as fraudulent 16 years of classes that had no instruction and were graded by a secretary. The NCAA Committee on Infractions 24-page decision on Friday set off jubilation among UNC fans on a day that concluded with the men's basketball team raising its 2017 NCAA championship banner. But some outside of the university said the decision showed the NCAA is failing in its stated mission of supporting the educational opportunities for athletes. But it concluded there'd be no penalties, since no rules were broken, that it couldn't punish the university, because the totally phony classes, they didn't really exist, were not just available to athletes, but to other students, as well, more than 3,100 students took at least one of the phony classes, with jocks comprising half the beneficiaries. So, technically, no NCAA rules were broken, this really is also the triumph of lawyering over justice. Luke Decock, a columnist for the paper, detailed the whole mess for me yesterday and, as we were finishing, said, let me add one thing. The crux of this has always been that the NCAA is run for the university presidents, and the last thing they want is for the NCAA to poke around in our curriculum. This showed the soft spot between why university presidents created the NCAA and the fact they don't want it poking around on their turf, academia. So much for classes that didn't really exist, which didn't need, as Kane detailed for me. They were created and graded by a secretary. A an analogy he just came up with is to watching a point guard bring up a ball on a court with other players around him, but then seeing that there are no baskets on the court or anybody in the stands. But the university's defense was to both concede the specifics and maintain these weren't fraudulent classes. They were part of the regular curriculum, it claimed, meaning the NCAA didn't really have jurisdiction. Thus, quite apart from having any cleansing effect, says Kane, this could be a blueprint for future cheating, especially when one takes into account the university history of stonewalling as facts dribbled out, Kane says it's now even installing software so it will know, for example, if any suspicious professor wants to check the transcript of a student athlete.